Hi, my name is Leanne and this is the Everyday Princess. Welcome. Isn't it amazing that being the daughter of the King of Kings transforms our everyday lives? My topic today is the heart and actions of a princess and a prince too, of course. I am going to give you an overview on the heart rules of the kingdom found in Matthew 5, 1 to 12. I hope this makes you hungry to study this passage for yourself. In Matthew 5, Jesus sits down on the mountaintop and teaches his disciples how to find blessing in his kingdom. It is not a path that the world would take to find happiness. The Greek word for blessed is makarios and is a happiness that refers to that state of being marked by the fullness of God. Let's look at this passage together. Matthew 5, verses 1 and 2. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, In 2 Corinthians 3.16, we see disciples are people who turn to the Lord and are gradually being transformed into God's image by God's Spirit. Are you a follower of Jesus? Verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We often think we can find happiness by trying hard to do good. Like this woman under a big rock, determined to save herself and to manage her own life. I can just hear her saying, I just have to try hard. I've got this. I don't need God's help. I can do this on my own. This is impossible, rebellious, and sin. She absolutely needs God's help. In 1 John 1, 9, we see what the answer is to repent of her sins and turn to God for help. He promises to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is God's wonderful grace for us. Being part of God's kingdom means recognizing our utter dependence and need for God to save us from our sin. Are you under a rock? Verse 4, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You mourn because by God's grace, you recognize your sin and helplessness to save yourself. Like the woman in Luke 7, 37 to 38, who mourned her sin at Jesus' feet and was comforted by his forgiveness and love. Are you grieving your sin and this fallen world at Jesus' feet? Verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. When a believer is poor in spirit and mourns their sin, a change takes place in how they see and treat themselves and others. They see clearly that everyone needs the Savior. In Austria, there is an expression, wir sind lauter bedürftige Wursteln. Translated into English, it means we are a bunch of needy hot dogs. And it's so true. Now, fear of God replaces fear of man. Meekness shows itself in the kind, gentle, and patient way we treat each other. How do you see those around you? Verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. When you, by God's grace, have eyes to see a fallen world, you become hungry for goodness and righteousness to replace the evil in your heart and in the world. In Luke 15, the prodigal son was faced with eating pig food and hungered for good food. He saw his foolish ways, repented of his sin of rebellion against his father, and grieved his sin, his father welcomed him with joy and prepared a feast to celebrate his return. Do you long for your heart and this world to be made righteous and whole? God promises this longing will be satisfied. In Romans 12, 2, we see that when God transforms your mind, you know what is right and good to do. Here's a quote from Martin Lloyd-Jones. As we live our ordinary lives, we are declaring all the time exactly what we are. What are we? The next three verses answer that question. Verses 7, 8, and 9. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. We are merciful. Mercy is pity in action. God showed his mercy to us by sending his son to die for our sins to save us. We follow our father's example and show mercy to others. 
we are also pure in heart. Step by step, the Spirit of God is cleansing our hearts. In Psalm 51, David confessed his sin against God. He knew only God could cleanse his heart so that he would want what God wants and see God. What a glorious goal. Purity is the result of all that has gone before and comes from that purifying, which is the sure answer of God to our poverty, mourning, and longing. Peacemaker. We are peacemakers. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 21, we see how God reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, sharing the good news of the gospel and living out in our daily lives God's transformational work in our hearts and minds. Peacemaking is the result of the Spirit's work in us, of being poor in spirit, mourning, meekness, hungry for righteousness, merciful, and pure in heart is how that apprenticeship deepens the conception of peace, which Christ's subjects are to diffuse. Verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Satan and the world hate this righteousness and attack. This is a picture of the 12 gemstones in the foundation of the new Jerusalem. I made this screensaver that appears every time I open my iPhone to remind me of the hope of heaven and eternity with the Lord in a world that is ruled only by righteousness. Heaven is ahead. Are you a follower of Jesus who tries again and again to do good and feels frustrated over your failure? I encourage you to follow the example of the woman in Luke 7 who found comfort at Jesus' feet as she mourned her sin and recognized that she needed her Savior and was utterly dependent on God. This is where your transformation begins and continues step by step as the Spirit of God changes your heart through being poor, mourning, meek, hungry for righteousness, merciful, desiring a pure heart, and being a peacemaker. May the Lord bless you on this pathway that you walk with him. Be encouraged, dear sisters. There are blessings ahead.